complaints of, you know, people have dogs guarding their pot patches in the city limits of Medford with, with huge amounts of, of right in the city. Absolutely, and <laughs> the, the whole thing about transparency of government, we hear that all the time. Transparency of government. We haven't even talked about it, but there's an OM uh, medical marijuana board, a governing board that that oversees this program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, who sits on that board? Who's on the board? Patient card holders, caregivers, or advocates for the program. And they're the ones running the, running the show. Well, they're the ones making the That's, advisory decisions. The advisory to, decisions to, to, to the they're program. They're running the show. I mean, they're, they're making the rules. It's not a mixed bag. It, it doesn't have... It doesn't have law enforcement representatives Absolutely on it. Absolutely not. Okay, I see what or you're even, saying. It's even, all... It's all people... It's, it's like interbred, right? E in there. Even right. taking law enforcement out of the mix, there's no treatment providers or necessarily medical providers. Well, we have a final video we want to share with you as we've been discussing about the issues surrounding medical marijuana in Jackson County and what, <laughs> excuse me, what the sheriff and what police law enforcement officers are having to deal with throughout the county. And as you're seeing tonight, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a big deal out there and uh, growing. So what are the challenges that Jackson County, unique to us here in facing this medical marijuana issue, is certainly you can say Southwest Oregon, Northern California, we're the epicenter, it's where it's all happening. So let's find out what those challenges unique to Jackson County are. Why is Jackson County taking a stand? In 2010, Jackson County commissioners, in working with law enforcement, started to realize that much of the criminal element and abuse were falling into our area. The frustrations with this growing problem created a request to deal with some of the ambiguity in the law to help law enforcement control the criminal element associated with the abuse. Like the voters, Jackson County commissioners were not concerned with the legitimate use of medical marijuana for those it can truly help, but due to our climate and soil profile, our area is considered one of the best areas in the world to grow marijuana. Criminals know that with manipulation of the current OMMP laws, they can produce untraceable excess inventory and sell on the streets for huge profits. In Jackson County, there is advertising on TV and radio informing people to get their medical marijuana cards. What message are we sending to our kids when they see this on TV and hear it on the radio after years of teaching them to just say no to drugs? Let's talk with Rita Sullivan, director of On Track, about the effect the OMMP is creating in the addictions and recovery field in Jackson County. Addictions is perhaps one of the hardest hit areas because we're abstinence-based programs trying to help people and a recovery, and there's a complicating factor uh, called medical marijuana um, that makes it much harder to treat people when they have what they believe is a doctor's authority to use. We don't, we don't actually see it the same way. Um, but it does complicate treatment for us. It complicates employment for employers. It, it has complicating factors running throughout it. And I think that speaks largely to it being a lot different uh, um, bill than we thought we were casting our votes for. Well, what we're seeing is people coming in with an attitude that this is, my doctor told me I should take this. And you can imagine in treatment where we're saying you need to be abstinent from all mood and mind altering drugs, um, except those prescribed and supervised by a physician for, uh, for medical conditions for which they're treating you. This is not a prescription. It's a card that says you're, you're an eligible person but there's no supervision that follows that approval. There's no disagreement in my mind that medical marijuana has its uses and should be allowed uh, for terminally ill clients for whom medical care has not helped. And I don't think there's any argumentation about that anywhere. It's that when it's become more of an alternative medicine for less significant complaints than, in my view, it should be used for. Then we have, you know, little to no regulation on it, uh, a spreading use, a belief that it's an innocuous drug because doctors are saying you can use it, and, and um, complicating what employers do, what treatment tries to do as we try to get people to abstain from all mood and mind altering drugs. And it's not something that we can say, well, you stick to prescriptive levels, like other drugs are using. You're compliant with treatment as long as you're sticking with the prescriptive levels, because 
there aren't prescriptive levels. Doctors don't say smoke this much or that much. They just give an endorsement for a card and then you smoke what you need to smoke. And you can see how that sort of falls outside of the regulation of other mood and mind altering drugs that doctors may prescribe. We're not summarily against it. We are against it in its present form and so grossly defined. Uh, any, you know, we have HIV AIDS programs. And I can tell you, when somebody's in end-stage disease, they should have access to whatever makes their life better. Or somebody who has a chronic condition that's causing them so much pain they have no quality of life, whatever works. But kids coming in at 20 or 21 years old saying, I'm, I'm getting a card, and the medical conditions don't meet muster on our medical director's list then we have a problem. So I think we all as Oregonians need to revisit this and uh, do what's right. Here is another telling illustration of how the medical marijuana program is creating unbalanced growth in Jackson County. In February of 2010, there were almost 4,500 cardholders in Multnomah County, slightly more than 3,000 in Lane County, and Jackson County had 2,931 cardholders. Although Jackson County has 28% and 59% respectively of those larger communities' population, we have 66% and 98% respectively of their number of cardholders. We had more than 1,000 more cards than Clackamas and Washington counties, and neighboring Josephine County was fourth in number of cards. And the problem is growing. As of January 2011, just 10 months later, it is reported there are now 6,626 cardholders in Multnomah County, almost 4,200 in Lane County, and Jackson County has 4,898 cardholders. We now have the second most cards in the state of Oregon, although we are fifth in population. The criminal element has truly found a home in Jackson County. So the Jackson County Commissioners have asked Jackson County Administrator Danny Jordan to look at the current law and make a recommendation for changes that would keep the criminal element of this legislation off our doorstep. There is current legislation in Salem that deals with the issues we have seen in this presentation. It deals with tightening up the looser defined illnesses that are creating easy access to an OMMP card, controlling the abuse of some doctors that excessively prescribe medical marijuana, adding more people to the oversight committee that deal with drug addiction and adding more doctors that understand when it should be prescribed, decreasing the size of grow sites to limit abuses, keeping grow sites away from schools, giving law enforcement more authority to inspect grow sites for compliance, not allowing cards to be held by minors without supervision of a legal guardian, allowing doctors to prescribe amounts needed for treatment on a case-by-case -case basis, requiring a criminal record check for those receiving cards, creating a period of time after a conviction for a felony before being allowed to possess a card, requiring timely processing of card requests, notification requirements if the content changes on the application of a cardholder, the temporary suspension of a card when the cardholder is charged with a crime and quick reinstatement of the card if the person is found not guilty decreasing the amount that can be possessed by a cardholder at any one time to lower the temptation of abuse, giving law enforcement the information needed to monitor and investigate abuse without violating privacy law, holding participants accountable to child protection laws just like any other person would be in society. All common sense ideas, but ones that have become lost in the way the program is working today. Jackson County Commissioners, legitimate medical marijuana cardholders, the Jackson County Administrator, citizens and law enforcement agencies all encourage support of new legislation in Salem that will shore up the intent of our independent-minded, compassionate, and thoughtful decision to allow medical marijuana use in Oregon. And welcome back to our, our show here, Jackson County Close Up. I'm Pete Bell Castro, and we've been talking tonight about medical marijuana with Lieutenant, uh, Deputy, I want to call you the Lieutenant, Deputy Chief Tim George of the Medford Police Department. As long as you don't cut my pay, I don't you know, care. Well, he's, he's, he's been on this, this channel longer, almost longer than I have. Uh. <laughs> and t Lieutenant Tim Doney and Sheriff Mike Winters. We only have a few minutes left. You said something really interesting to me, Tim. 38,000 uh, cardholders in Oregon and how, one doctor has done what? To one this? doctor alone has, uh, has made recommendations on over 8,000 patients. 8,000 of those cardholders came from one doctor. That's what we talk about, the kind of the, the misuse or the abuse that we're talking about tonight as we're seeing here. 
we only got a couple of minutes left. Are there any solutions here? Do you talk with Senator Bates, Representative Esquivel, Representative Buckley? Do you guys tell them what's going on? Are they aware of this kind of the thing that we've just seen here tonight? There's been discussions at the local level, but there's also been uh, Sheriff's Association, Oregon Chiefs of Police, the Oregon Narcotic Enforcement Officer Association, lots of different groups have come. There's even a legislative uh, concept that's being proposed uh, this time around, too, for, again, amendments to the current law. And again, we are not saying that there are not people that need it. And right. we, we would all agree that there are people that need it. There's a, there's a medical need for it. What we're just saying is, is that the current system needs amendments and it needs control so it is done properly to avoid the abuse. And unfortunately, the abuse has overgrown the, uh, the medical need. The abuse is just growing and taking more. Mm -hmm. Sheriff, we'll give you the final say here. Uh, solutions. This is what we're, this part of a solution. Um, well, I, that's, that's an excellent piece of the puzzle. I mean, we need to, we just need to refine it and get it, uh, have meetings on it and get the, get it in balance. It is out of balance uh, at this time. Uh, there are people that legitimately need it. We all understand that. There are people that are abusing it, but we need to have the meetings and try to get this in balance so that the, the abusers uh, are not bleeding over on good, honest citizens that just want to live in peace and be able to have a barbecue and not smell uh, marijuana instead of hamburgers. Yeah, I mean, th that makes a lot of sense. I'm just concerned that the money factor of this is the way you're describing it is so, is so great. I mean, Harry and David, which may be our, our biggest you know, private company, that wouldn't even make anywhere near that kind of gross dollars and what you're saying is being sold th through medical marijuana and leaving this county and south there. So well, the economics seems like it would be so huge. I don't know how you get that anywhere, break that down because we don't have an economy here except this now. And I think it's important to note on, on some of those numbers that we gave you, that's not all medical marijuana. That is right. a lot of DTO grows out on public lands. Right. but. In my estimation, this, this was uh, started with compassion and intent, and quite honestly, it's been hijacked by profiteers that are out to make a buck at the, uh, at the expense of others. Some that are ill, and some that are uh, law-abiding neighbors that are dealing with repercussions mm -hmm. of, um, of what, in my estimation, is a law that has a lot of loopholes, and there's a lot of, a lot of leaks in the dike, and, and we're trying to get our, keep our finger in there um, because and it's your just hands are tied, and there's not much precedent, and you're you're out in the front line of all this. So, gosh, you guys, we're out of time, but well, we could we could we could go on for a lot That's longer a about <laughs> this. It's a it's a subject that I I think that you're at least bringing forward now that needs to be brought out there and discussed in our community, especially if you can have schools. You can you can grow by schools and the things you say, and the rules seem to be really out of out of whack and. Citizens have to step up and say, hey, we need to stop this and change this. And that's, that's what we can do in a democracy. So hopefully with you guys leading the way, we'll get there. Thank you. It was a fascinating show tonight. That'll do it for Jackson County Close Up. Uh, again, giving you a chance to look at the close up of what's going on inside Jackson County's government. A big thanks to our student crew here at SU for their support of tonight's program. The show is uh, produced by Bill Mance. I'm Pete Bell Castro. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.